Empire. We're going to talk to the man behind the success of one of the Super Bowl's most dominant forces. What's up, everybody? It's Mike Jones. Thanks for coming back for another episode of the Football Jones Podcast. You can read me at usatoday.com. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at by Mike Jones. And yes, as I said, we're talking about George Kittle. And no one better to talk to than John Embry, the tight ends coach of the San Francisco 49ers. The guy that has helped select him coming out of the draft. The guy who has helped develop him and groom him. And so we're going to hear about the importance of the tight end in the Shanahan offense. If you remember, they've had a long track record dating back to Mike Shanahan's Super Bowl days, even the days in Washington, the success that Kyle Shanahan and Embry had in Atlanta with Tony Gonzalez, to now where George Kittle has taken over as one of the most dominant tight ends in the game. And we're also going to hear the secret to Kittle's success and why Embry says he's not even close to being as good as he possibly can be. It's a really, really interesting interview. I learned a lot from it and hope you enjoy it. So here we go. Sitting down with John Embry, tight ends coach for the San Francisco 49ers. You know, it's, it's a staple of the Shanahan offense when you think back all the great tight ends that they've had, um, you know, from Shannon Sharp, you know, and you, know, you worked with Cooley, you know, they had Jordan Reed, they had, you know, and you've got Kittle, who is one of the, just the monster. What is it about the tight end that's so important to this offense, and how are you guys able to use him as such a weapon, whereas, you know, some teams, they, they don't right. really emphasize it like that. All right, well, I, you know, I think the first thing is it, it all starts with our run game, you know. With us being an outside zone run team, what it does is it allows us, if your tight end is willing to block and do some things for the run game, it opens up things for them in the pass game, opens up things for them uh, in you know, the drop back game or the play action game. So uh, the way their system or the way the system is set up, it's all predicated off the run. And, and then what happens is, you know, DB safety start creeping up closer and closer to try to stop the run. If you have a guy like a Kittle or the Jordan Reeds or Shannon or she had Jordan Cameron, a similar type of system in Cleveland, they can run. All of a sudden they're behind you and it's a it's a big play. So it's kind of a pick your poison that you force the defense into. Gotcha. Yeah, we see a lot of times that there's that drag across the field and yeah. the tight end is there. Um, you would think eventually when you have it on film enough that, but I guess that goes down to you guys have those run fits that look so precise yes. every time. Yeah, well, the run fits, and then, like, okay, let's say you want to stay back and keep stopping it. Well, guess what happens? You run the ball 42 times and throw it eight, right. and you win the game. So now what happens, <laughs> right? right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, what is it that you enjoy about coaching tight ends and working with a guy like George Kittle? Well, the first thing about it is it's like we're involved in everything. We're in the pass pro. We're in the run game. We're in the pass game. So it gives you an opportunity to learn and be involved in the whole offense. So that's what I love most about this position because besides the quarterback, we have to know more than anybody else Mm -hmm. on the offense. And then coaching someone like Kittle, it's – I love it because he's passionate about football. Anytime you can work with someone that's passionate about what they do and really do love the game and really want to get better and want you to coach them, then it's fun because it's just like being a teacher. If you're a teacher and you have a, a bright student that wants to learn more, you know, and they keep coming for extra help and doing all that, you, you know, you can't help but want to, you know, help them get better and reach their full potential. And it's the same thing for me. I, I just see myself as a teacher. Uh, bigger brother, uncle, dad, whatever it is to, to my to my players, I call them my kids, but you know, be in that situation to help mentor them, help them with things, not only just in football, but with life and just kind of help them navigate things that are coming up. But uh, you got to have someone, you got to have a guy like Kittle, like Ross Dwelly, like Levine, Garrett Selleck, that are passionate and want to get better. Every day they come into our room, 
they take notes, they ask questions, they want to be better. I don't have to ask them, I don't have to prod them, I don't have to say, hey, did you do this? Hey, do this next. Hey, we we're meeting at this time. They're, they they know the schedule, they know we do things early, they know we work at a different pace. They're there early always, they're there as late, they never say, hey coach, can we leave in five minutes? They, they, they're never like that. They just try to take in all the information you give them, they, they'll stay in the field as long as you want. And when you have people like that, that makes it fun to work with. What is the challenge of finding and identifying a talented tight end? Because in college, it's kind of it's not really a guy that chooses a pass catcher. You know, right. Those guys are all now spread wide receivers or whatever. How do you identify that and project that into the NFL? Well, there's there's I mean, for me, it's I, I feel like it, it, it's it's easier. I feel it's, I don't feel like it's hard. Okay. Um, because there's there's certain things that I think kids put on tape that kind of help paint a picture for what they what they're like as a person. Are they tough? Okay. You know, are they passionate? Do they like football? Uh -huh. You know, some people like it, some people love it. Right. You know, everybody, you know, shoot, yeah. If I get the ball ten times, I'm getting eight touchdowns. Yeah. And, yeah why wouldn't I like it? Yeah. What happens if you don't get the ball? What happens if you're hurt? Are you playing? Are you practicing? So there's things like that as you do your research on the kids coming out of college that kind of give you a, a, a snapshot into who they are as a person. It's like stats and all that running stuff, I don't pay attention to that. Okay, because okay. As, as, as people like to say when they miss on somebody in a first round pick, well, you can never measure their heart. But there are things that will kind of give you a snapshot or okay. give you an idea of what might be in their heart. Okay. okay. You know what I mean? Right, right, yeah. And so to me, that's what it's all about as, as, as a tight end coach or any coach, any position of coaches, trying to find that piece because if they have the right things in there or that you feel like, you know, that they want to be good at it, then they will be good and then they will have success and then everything will snowball from that. Gotcha. It, it looks like George really likes blocking. He likes being physical. Um, what is it? What does he like in those drills? And then you know, after you know those run sequences where you guys have just been pounding the ball, what's he like when he's on the sideline coming off the field like that? Well, he, he gets just as like you say, he just, just gets just as excited about that as he does when it comes to catching a long touchdown. You know, the thing that he likes about it, and I and I one of the things that I, I liked about him coming out was he enjoys being physical. And to me, 90% of blocking is want to. And then the other 10% is technique and being physical. Okay. And he wants to be physical. And so it's not, it didn't take much right. to get him to embrace the blocking role. You know, right, that's right, part yeah. of it. And then he understood too, the better it was at blocking, then the easier it's going to be for him to go out and catch passes. Gotcha. They're not trying to jam you. Mm -hmm. It's harder to double team a guy like that because again, all the run fits are different. You're motioning over, all the communication that has to go on. So it kind of helps you stay in a one-on-one -on -one situation or working against zone. Gotcha. You know what I mean? So yeah. he understood all that and then, you know, just going out working on technique, footwork, hands, hat placement. Uh, and he's not thin skinned. Okay. You know, like I, I coach guys pretty hard. But they understand it's not personal. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And they understand that as soon as they get that piece down, then we'll work on something else. And so, you know, there's just a process that we kind of go through. I go through when I'm coaching them so that they understand that it, it's not going to be easy and we're never going to be satisfied. Like, there's something we're always chasing. Yeah. It's called perfection. Right, right, yeah. And we're not ever going to get there. Yeah. But we're just going to keep chipping away at it. And then don't look up. Just when it's all said and done, you can look back and say, okay, what did I get better at? What do I need to get better at? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So if it's like, if you just, I hate to, to say say this, you know, what's what happened, but it's so true. And Kobe said, it's like, if you enjoy the process of the journey and don't worry about the end result or the dream, that is the dream. That it's right. going through all that. That's what it is. And, and finding guys like that that are like-minded like right. that that allows us to have success. Or allows you know that player to have success. Gotcha. It seems like he's gonna be a pretty fun guy to be around. Do you have any funny yeah. anecdotes or stories that kind of just embody him? No, nah, he's 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 what you see. He's goofy. Uh -huh. he, he loves life. Everything he does is 
it is 100%. Uh, but he's funny. He, he likes to crack jokes. He, t- he takes it as well as he gives it. Right. Uh, he's a huge WWE guy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I mean, huge. And he's always talking about that or, you know, things. And I don't know the first thing. I mean, I know The Rock. I knew Hulk Hogan. Uh, Stone Cold. I mean, there's about four. And I just know right. because I hear the names yeah. and all that. But uh, he, he's, he's authentic. Okay. And I think that's what people love, you know, about him and being around him is that he's authentic. He's what you see is what you get. He doesn't change no matter who's in the room. So it could be a room full of nuns. Uh-huh. <laughs> be careful, George. But he does, you know what I mean? He's right, gonna, right. George is going to be George. Uh-huh, right. You know what I mean? But and, but people, I, I think, really gravitate to that and respect that, and, and you should, you know, people being them up true to themselves. How rewarding is it for you to see him go out there, execute what you guys prepare, and have so much fun and play at such a high level? Well, it's, it's you know, it's, I love it because, you know, like I said, I feel like these guys are all like your kids. Uh-huh. And I just, for me, it's exciting and rewarding because I know where he started. I know how ugly things were his rookie year at different times and a lot of different phases. And then I saw the strides he took last year. And I told him after last year, you're not, yeah, congratulations, you had a great year, but that's not, we're still not there yet. And then had that conversation with him this year about, okay, here's what you did well after the Seattle game, uh, the last game, here's what you did well. Here's what we got to get better at. And, you know, so he, he embraces all that. You know what I mean? And, 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 and so just seeing where he's at from where he started is very rewarding. But I'm really excited about where he can be. Like, when that hits, man, I'll be ecstatic. Right? Me and him have some conversations about where I think it needs to go and where it can go. Now let's chase it. So I'm, I'm looking forward to those next two or three years of let's see if we can do it. You know, yeah. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Now you said how ugly it was the rookie year. What was what were some of the... Woo. the route running was, 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 was raw. Uh-huh. The shorter routes, he's still improving at that. Uh, was average after the catch. You know, he had moments, uh-huh. but he didn't really wasn't consistent with it uh played with a bad high ankle sprain so then that hampered him uh wasn't as strong with his hands in the in the run game like he is now when he fits you up was average on 50 50 balls uh you know struggled i thought uh, you know on his backside run blocking was was average at best I'm sitting there, I'm not, I mean, he yeah. still played well, but, <laughs> but, quite a lot those are, yeah, yeah. But, but those are the things, that's what I mean, like, if you listen to social media and the fans, everyone's telling you how great you are, and then you got me in the room talking about all those things, right. it's probably not going to work, uh-huh. and then eventually, I'm probably going to be bore out correct, uh, right. because the tape's going to keep showing these deficiencies. Uh-huh. And the general manager, the coach, and the position coach, head coach make the decision where to keep you, right. not the fans. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And so it's how I give the message and him understanding, hey, this is, this, and it, again, it was it was all right. Right. You know, but again, what's the positives? Well, you started your, as a rookie from day one. Right. You know, you had over 500 yards. Uh-huh. You know, you, you played uh, four games on a sprained ankle that was second to none. Like, every other day they were like, I don't know if he can make it. You rarely miss practice with that ankle. Like, there's a lot of stuff that he did that was phenomenal that doesn't show up on the tape. The, you know, you, you, you didn't make a lot of MAs. It was a very complicated offense. You were able to play more than one position. So there was a lot of positives. It's just when you sit there and you say, okay, this is where you started, though. And then you look at, okay, last year, led the NFL in yak. 
set an NFL record for most yards by a tight end in the season. You know, we start looking at that. He's like, holy cow, one year leap. Okay, what did he do this year? Well, he didn't. He didn't make the yards. And I told him, I said, you're going to probably have a better year this year, but then not the same numbers. And then he makes All Pro this year on lesser numbers. Well, why was it? Because he became a dominant inline run blocker. He still he became even more consistent to run after the catch. You know, he had three touchdowns called back. He would have had more touchdowns. You know, so there's a lot of things that he was doing. He was, he's kind of the, you know, the straw that stirs the drink when it comes to the offense, like brings the energy and the juice and helps, you know, like get the guys going when it's a lull. Like he's, we need a play. He's that guy. Right. That play might be the Saints getting us to, in a situation to win the game. It might be, uh, against Arizona where, hey, uh, we're down 14 nothing or 13 nothing. We call a third down pass. You knock the guy down, you catch it, break a tackle, go for a 30-yard touchdown. And there, and here come the Niners all of a sudden. Right. Here we go. Right. You know, so it, it's, it's a lot of different ways that he has kind of lit the fuse for the offense. And it doesn't necessarily show up in the stat sheet. Right, right. Uh -huh. And telling you all this, trust me, he can be way better, and that's what I'm excited about. I think in another couple years, we can sit here and say, okay, now can you sustain it? You know? But we got two more years, I believe, in this journey before we start talking about, okay, now how, now let's see how many we can keep stacking. Okay. That level of consistency yes. and everything. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be something to see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited about it. I think it's a, a unique situation. And, um, you know, I've only been around one guy who has done that sustained success like that, and that was Tony Gonzalez. Okay. You know, and, and Tony has a lot of some a lot there's some similarities between those two and how they see the game, how they feel about the game, their work ethic. Um, their ability to be all in, uh, it's real unique because it's hard to be all in on something for seven, eight months. Yeah, right. But they both have an uncanny ability to be, when I mean all in, they are all in. You know, so it's, because he has that in him, I think these next two years will be a lot of fun to see what we can do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Coach, I thank you very much yeah. for your time. No problem, I appreciate no it. Problem. Good luck yeah, to you nice guys. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Really great stuff right there. It's going to be interesting to see how this game goes. I do think that, you know, Kittle's going to impact it, whether from a run blocking standpoint, whether from a pass catching standpoint. And the thing that you love about him when I talk to Kittle um, as part of the huge smog of uh, reporters on uh, Media Night uh, Monday uh, was... Uh, the way that he just really loves being physical, as Embry um, uh, explained there. And you could see Kittle's eyes just light up uh, when he talked about run blocking and how much fun he has just slamming these guys and dominating them um, and, and just the tone setter that he is for this offense. So it's going to be fascinating to watch. Um, I, I, it is such a tough call. It's a one-and-a-half point spread, Chiefs favored, by that narrow margin I've been going back and forth I'm going to go with the Chiefs as my pick for the winner I think yes as dominant as that defense of the 49ers is Patrick Mahomes and that offense are so explosive and Mahomes has just got a little bit more of that special factor I think that can elevate his unit above this very very good defense so I'm calling it Chiefs win they get their first Super Bowl in 50 years. But I think we'll see the 49ers back sometime soon, even if they do lose this game here. Either way, it's going to be a great game. Hope you guys are already got your Super Bowl party plans. Hope you enjoy the game. And I will talk to you Monday after we know who is crowned as the Super Bowl champion. Again, you can read me at usatoday.com. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at mymikejones. Take this link. Do me a favor. Send it to your friends, and I will talk to you guys next week.